so let's get to it. Today we are discussing a very scary book, and that is The Call by Peter O'Gillian. <laughs> So if you haven't read this, I will tell you a little bit about what it's about. And the whole thing takes place on Ireland. And Ireland has been cut off from the outside world. One day, like, these walls of mist just suddenly appeared. And everybody who was on Ireland have been trapped there since. If you are a child, like between... I don't really remember the ages, but it's like be between... Um, 10 and 16 years old, you will be called by a fairy. And you can be called at any time uh, through those ages. Uh, you won't know before and then you are gone for three minutes in this world. But in the fairy's world, it's uh, 24 hours and you basically have to survive until those 24 hours have gone. And uh, if you are sane, uh, you come back and are alive and stuff or you're dead, basically. This is definitely the scariest book I have ever read. Great Halloween read, if you want nightmares. That's a little about what it's about. If, if this sounds interesting to you at all, pick it up, because you're not gonna regret it. It is great, I promise. So now, you people who haven't read it, uh, see you when you have read it. Bye! <laughs> Let's talk about the call. Okay, so we start out on this bus with Nessa and Megan, and they are going to the school after some break. When I started reading, I didn't really know uh, what this was about, so I didn't know what to expect. Then I meet this boy, and suddenly he disappears, and they they have to stop the bus and like go back because they appear exactly where they vanished. Yeah, anyways, uh, they started to count down time, and I mean, I'm not really, I don't really, I'm not really sure what I'm in for yet. And uh, this boy returns, and uh, he's he's dead. Um, he had uh, I don't remember remember how he was like mutated, but he had like horns or something like. Um, whoa, things got real really fast here. <laughs> the writing style through this book, uh, it was very different, but I I liked it. It was. It was almost like watching a movie. The style it was uh, rather in. I, I, I like it. I, I do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this could never be a movie. They are like naked all the time and they're like 14. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine how they would do all the creatures in the Greyland. Like the crabs when, uh, you know, Anto is swimming uh, in that lake and the crabs on, and ev all the monsters are made of humans as well. <coughs> That's so, uh, um, um, uh, very, um, I, um, yeah. Those fairies, uh, psychopaths, yeah. I haven't been to hell yet, but I imagine it, it's kind of the same thing, being in the grey land. I don't know. I like to think that I would survive the call, but I wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, anyway, so our lead character, Nessa, uh, I really like her because she is... You know, she's handicapped, so everybody looks down on her. But not really, like, look down on her, but they, they underestimate her all the time. And I can relate to that, so I was so happy about, like, she being strong and, like, not showing that it hurts her. Because I think it's annoying when <laughs> when the bad guys, like, get to, get to on the emotions of the other character. Be strong. Well, so I, I really appreciated her. You know, she has this really strong call for surviving. She's not going to accept that uh, dying. She's going to survive and she's gonna prove everybody wrong. Slay girl. I think Nessa is my favorite character but I did really love Anto as well. Uh, we didn't get as much about him and I think that's why he's not quite my favorite character. I, he probably would have been if, I, if we got to know more about him. You know rumor has it that there's going to be more in this series, but, but I, I'm not sure, so don't, don't quote me on that. It must be so terrifying living in this world that you, you can just disappear at any moment. <laughs> and can you think of the most inconvenient times to get called? <laughs> like, what if you're on a boat <laughs> in the middle of the ocean? Like, I think you're screwed. 
I mean, you're going to be, if you are alive, you're going to be really tired and you fall into the water, you'll probably die. <laughs> what, if you're in, what if you're in an airplane <laughs> when you get a call? <laughs> I'm sorry, why am I laughing? <laughs> that, that would be the worst, coming back and <laughs> if you're just falling to your death anyways. I mean, that's how Nessa tricked the fairies in the end, like she was in a burning building and they, they didn't want to like break their promise. So they made her fireproof. She's kind of a superhero now. I mean, she has superpowers, so if there are more books, so that can come in handy. And Anto has like soup I mean his arm is like all, all mutated and stuff but it's very strong so he's kind of kind of have a superpower as well. <laughs> the moment that fairy grabbed Anto's wrist when he was in <laughs> the Grey Land, my heart stopped because then she was like, I'm going to make you a giant. Ooh, no and then if we know if we doesn't we don't get to know what we don't get to know what happens. We just come back to our you know when Megan was called I was so scared as well. <laughs> but Megan did some good. Like I wonder what that creature was that like we're trying to help her and it wanted her to deliver some kind of message. I wonder if that comes to play if we get the more, more books. I feel like it had to because it it was weird. <laughs> the fairies are like happy all the time, you know, they are delighted in killing all these children. I mean, they think it's beautiful, you know, like art, the way they twist and mutate humans. Mm. No. No, and when Megan tells them about everything that's wonderful on Earth, that they are missing out on, that's when she really gets them. You know, when she she's like, eh, I have seen the bees flying on the fields and the grass between my toes and the eating strawberries. Yeah, you will never have that. I will have 14 years of earth and you will have eternity in, in this dead place. I was so satisfied at that moment as well. Like, finally we get some kind of reaction from the Sid Sid I a Sid Sida, Shida, Shida, Shida. No, I, I see Shida. Ah. You know, let's let's call them fairies and make it easy for both of us. Well, anyways, so that's the first time we do get a reaction from the fairies, and and uh, I I was very happy that finally that Megan got to them. And, you know, maybe she wasn't like the fittest one or anything, but but she knew she knew how to talk. Yeah, she knew how to do that. You know, actually the moment, uh, because we get to see everybody that gets called, like how, what they do when they come to the Grey Land. And, uh, you know, the first time one of them, like, heard some very useful information, I thought, I thought, like, well, well if, if you're gonna die anyways, can't you just, like, write it down with, like, blood on your, with a rock or something, sharp or something on your arm, so that when you're body gets back like everybody will know uh, what information you heard like I think that's pretty that should be obvious but, but apparently it, it wasn't and then Megan did it and I, I you thank you Megan you took my advice I uh, we're ve very lucky she got that message down because otherwise she, uh, the school might have been erased I wonder where he got the inspiration for this book like I think it's a, a very interesting like you get you get called you're away for three minutes you get back and it's 24 hours in the, you know the gray land very interesting about how it's like smaller than our world and that's why the time is different and stuff I actually did I, I, I did some math <laughs> yeah I know nerd <laughs> so what I got was that you know three minutes is 24 hours in the gray land so one hour on earth is 20 days in the gray land that's so that's so long and that that's just one hour one hour is 20 days and one day on earth is 480 days in the gray land that's more than a year on one on one day that's horrifying i would not want to live in the gray world i i I, I hate the I hate the fairies, 
But I mean, they must have got, gotten this twisted for some reason. I don't think they were this bad when the humans banished them to the Grey Land. I mean, I mean, it could have, couldn't have been. I think living there in the Grey Land like made them just you know they they didn't have any of the beautiful things that we had on Earth. So their whole lives got driven by vengeance for the humans who put them there. I mean, they live forever also. So the ones that already are in the Grey Land. They probably has been there since the beginning when they got banished because they have the cauldron and they remember how it was on Earth. Just imagine how long that will have been. Let's say, let's say uh, they have banished uh, a thousand years, like from Earth's perspective. One day on Earth is 480 days in the Grey Land. It's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's so long. You realize like it's more than a year on one day. Then imagine a week. One week on Earth is 3,360 days in the Grey Land. I can't help but uh, I, 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 I wouldn't want that for anything. It's the worst. I mean, I hate the fairies. They can all rot there because they are so, uh, their minds are so twisted. Like when they were discussing about how they were going to, uh, you know, bend the Laia, you know, making her into a ring and stuff. Ugh, mm. No, 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 no. They, uh, they are seriously damaged. Anyway, so we also have uh, the worst character in the whole book, and Connor, you know, he. He's definitely worse than the fairies. Why, why, why is he mean? He doesn't have a reason. Like, the fairies were, have been banished to this horrible land for uh, eternity. And uh, Connor, he's, he's just designing to be a douchebag. In the beginning, actually, he could have gone either way, I feel like. Because I wasn't sure about him in the beginning. He wasn't purely evil then. He could have gone good. He, he, he felt like a character who could have, like, changed and, and come to the good side. But he didn't, no. At least he died, you know? That that brings me some happiness. It was so disturbing when he was in the Greyland and he like fought with the fairies and he, he, he thought it was fun. He was like, oh, I can do this all day, you! Completely naked, uh, covered in blood and uh, you know, having a good time fighting, killing fairies, you know? I, I found that so disturbing, you know, and then it was stupid enough to shake hand with a fairy king who had like lips things on the arms like uh, that's also it's weird it's creepy anyway so connor wants to kill nessa because she humiliated him kind of i mean he's in love with her but but he wants to kill her you know the moment he was like pushing Nessa to the wall and you know, trying to kiss her and everything that's the moment i uh i knew i wasn't going to like him <laughs> sorry connor but he's dead now Nessa used her awesome uh, fireproof powers and you know just kissed him and then into the fire you know we get to see her in the end having fire on her fingertips with her family she can like spit fire flames kind of it's cool man i have never read anything scarier than this it was really scary you know when we first come to the gray land and there are all of the creatures are like made from humans you know the first chapter we get with that girl in the gray land and the dogs are coming to get her and they are like human like naked a naked woman, a man, yes, going in all four. You need to catch them. My master will be so happy. I do not want that dog. No. Yeah, and you know, the spider bushes. I think they're very creative, but very freakish. I mean, I mean it's a very pretty cover. I can look at it, this all day. Very ominous, very intriguing, I would say, yeah. I mean, do you know anyone who would survive the call in real life? I don't know. I, I really like how real the world in this book felt, you know? I really believe that what happened here is what would have happened if this happened in reality, you know? We would, we would start training our children to uh, be able to, you know, survive in the Grey Land. You know, yes, yes the fact that they have to wa walk without shoes to like harden the sole on their foot 
so that they can you know walk and run and stuff uh, without pain uh, on the ground because they don't get to take anything with them uh, when they are called so you know when they have to learn how to make weapon and fight and hide and I don't know all that they have to learn and I, I just think it's so stupid like that girl that's like smoke and stuff like why would you do that? Why? Why would you do that? You're basically dooming yourself. Only one in ten survive. And, and you're not gonna make it. <laughs> you're not gonna be able to run. Like, I don't think it's an option to, f to fight them. Like, it's 24 hours. That's, that's pretty long. I think you have, you have to be able to run and hide. I mean, that's basically what you have to do is to survive. I wonder what the rest of the world thinks has happened to Ireland if they are just like oh well yeah it's been like that for ages now <laughs> we can't do anything about it <laughs> we're just looking there at them like huh wonder wonder what happens to Ireland these days yeah they, they were probably worried about beginning maybe they tried to send help or something I mean if you go into that like wall that surrounds Ireland you come to the grey land I think right so that the fairies can make Horrible sculptures and animals and disgusting things out of you. <coughs> yeah, oosh. Well, that's my opinion on that, yeah. I mean, I don't know what I think about the teachers. I mean, I know it's necessary to be like really hard against the students because you don't want them to be lazy and stuff because you want them to survive, you know. The nation must survive. Maybe that Taft girl, you know, that teaches like combat and stuff, maybe she's a little too hard. I. I couldn't stand her when she was like bullying Nesta. Stop that. You do not underestimate my girl. The cage also is such a scary thought. Just to, just to think about it. What if you're called when you are in the cage? That, that would be the worst thing ever because you're like, you haven't been fed maybe for days and you're tired and, uh, and you're not prepared. Like, like, I don't think you're gonna make it if you've been in the cage. Honestly, so that's such a scary concept, but I realized they, they need something to like scare the children with so so that uh, they will do what's uh, necessary to train and become stronger to survive the call. I mean, I was satisfied with the ending, but you know, it is open for more story. That's all I'm saying. And uh, Connor died, so I'm, so I'm uh, happy about that. And you know, I wonder what it would look like to like see the fairies like shrink in reality. I'm just trying to imagine it, but it's it's so hard. <laughs> you know, seeing this uh, ad adult, but it's tiny. It's not like a, uh, like a dwarf. It's like a, a human that's small. Maybe that's what a dwarf is, but it, it's, I, I, I don't know. The true happy ending actually would have been if Nessa died in the Greyland because then the fairies would have broken their promise and you know I think if they if they ever like lie they can't come back to the human world because you know it's the only thing that's really dear to them like they can't break a promise and it might have something to do with that treaty thing you know how they got banished you know and if they like break a promise, maybe they can't come back to the human world because they're saying to Nessa that she could have saved the human race if she had just killed herself. You know, maybe that would have been the, the truly happy ending, but um, we're fine now though. Like, we, we can take on the fairies. We have fireproof girls and boys with one giant arm. We good. So, anyways, that have been all the things I've thought about the book, I think, if I haven't forgot anything, but um, I hope I'll see you some other time, and until then, I'm...